All right, here, um, let's stop for a moment and look back and see what we already learned from the HO model. Okay. Uh, the general conclusion we discussed in the previous videos says an economy will have a relatively higher supply of the goods that are intensive in the factor which the country is relatively better endowed. In other words, you can produce more of the goods by using, um, you know, the, um, the factors you, that the economy has more. Okay? That's why we said production is determined by resource endowment. Okay? All right. And we also discussed the distributional effect uh, and said that, you know, when a factor that an economy is abandoned rises, uh, its owners are worse off and owners of other factors are better off. Okay. Now, one thing I would like to point out here is no matter when we look at the general conclusion about uh, production or the conclusion here about the income distribution, you find that we haven't yet discussed trade, right? You didn't see trade here. Okay. We just talk about within this economy when we compare between two sectors, cloth and food. Okay. They have different um, factor intensive uh, production, right? So we're trying to figure out, you know, between these two, uh, which one the economy uh, could produce more, right? And which um, factors owner would be better off or worse off. Okay. Now in this video, we're going to add trade into our discussion okay so we're going to look at the effects of international trade uh, the first thing we need to figure out is pattern of trade okay i believe uh, we discussed um, or we explained what pattern of trade means before right we said that simply means which economy uh, in question exports what good right so we, we need to figure out, you know, this uh, export import thing, right, between the two economies. And uh, to be able to do that, we're going to make one more assumption. Okay, so this is assumption number five. Tastes are the same across countries. Okay, why we did this? Again, we did the same thing in previous chapter, right, when we talk about the specific factor model. Um, this is just help us simplify our analysis, okay? Because on the graph, we just want to draw one relative demand curve, okay? We don't want to produce uh, two or even more, right? Uh, so that's why we're assuming that, you know, uh, worldwide uh, consumers have the same taste, okay, across countries. So we're gonna uh, in other words you know uh, both home and foreign would share the same rd curve relative demand okay relative supply should be different okay rs would be different for home and foreign now why their rs different remember um I believe it was uh, assumption number three uh, we made and discussed in the previous video. Um, the we, we said that you know um, the production technologies are the same across countries, right? But here we're saying that the relative supply curves uh, for home and foreign are different, so. It must be something else, not technologies, right? Because technologies are assumed to be the same. So here, it's actually because of the abundance of uh, factors, more specifically, labor and capital, right? Uh, recall, we discussed or we assumed um, uh, before that the cloth production is labor intensive, right? And we also said that um, home is assumed to be abandoned in labor, right? So putting these assumption, two assumptions together, how could we graph relative supply 
for home and for okay so rs is the relative support for home and rs star is for for okay think about this okay i strongly encourage you to pause the video and and probably trying to get a scratch paper and a pen or pencil and trying to you know graph this okay all right now let's talk about the pattern of trade what does home export what does home import okay let's check it out now we believe that um the rs star lies above rs why now if you go down to the horizontal axis you know uh, from this equilibrium point number one and the equilibrium point number three you would be able to find that you know um for uh, you know the uh, home actually produced more of cloth than food than foreign right how so because remember um home is abandoned in labor and cloth production is labor intensive so as we said before home must uh, produce relatively more cloth than food right so this ratio uh, uh, qc over qf must be higher in home than that in foreign right again that's what we that's exactly what we find here on the graph okay uh, another way to figure this out is to look at the vertical axis the relative price because again home produces more cloth so cloth must be relatively cheaper um, you know compared to food in home okay then um, that in foreign so that's why here we see pc over pf uh, one is going to be um, you know stays lower than that uh, p then pc over pf three okay all right uh, remember we draw these two rs curves one for home the other for ho foreign when they are isolated from each other in other words there's no trade in, in between okay now if the two economies start trading with each other what's going to happen once again i strongly encourage you to pause the video in trying to figure this out on your own okay all right now here let's talk about it uh, when let's look at home first when home opens its door to trade and uh, the producers of cloth would find that you know on global market uh or in foreign let's see uh cloth is relatively more expensive right so you find the cloth producers in home uh start expanding their production right and they also shift some of the cloth at home um i'm sorry in home to um uh, in foreign to foreign right they ship um their products uh, to foreign so that they can be sold at higher price they can make a, a higher level of profit right all right now uh, because of that because a uh, home exports cloth so there would there would be less cloth available for the consumers in home to buy right and um, this decrease in supply would push up the price the relative price of cloth to food right at the same time uh, the consumers find that um, you know food in foreign is cheaper so they're gonna import they're gonna buy the imported food uh, from foreign right and because of that we find that you know um, the price of food in home would decrease okay because there's an increase in supply from uh, the imports right now with the with the um, increase in price of cloth and decrease in price of food we find this relative price ratio would go up 
from 1 here to 2, right? And um, so this is exactly what we're looking at. And similarly, we find that, you know, uh, in foreign, uh, there, the equilibrium is moving from 0.3 to 0.2, okay? Now here, we should be able to draw some important conclusions. Uh, the first one would be like the Riccardi model, the HO model also predicts a convergence of relative prices with trade, okay? So again, uh, they used to have a big gap here between their relative prices, right? When they are isolated from each other, but when they start trading with each other, then the um, we find the, the relative prices in both countries are converging, okay? So here, let's um, talk about these. Again, here is just a summary, okay? Um, of a convergence of the relative prices with the trade. And uh, in home, producers and consumers respond to uh, trade. And the way they respond is uh, the producers are going to produce more of cloth due to higher profitability, right? Um, but unfortunately, consumers would buy less of cloth due to the higher price, okay? Because again, producers um, take, um, you know, a significant amount of um, cloth uh, to foreign, okay? And so less would be available for the home's consumer. And finally, home becomes an exporter of cloth and an importer of food, okay? In foreign, now how producers and consumers respond to trade, um, as I said, I would like to try, um, you know, leave this for you guys to try on your own and then uh, bring your analysis to class. We're going to discuss that. Okay, we're going to check your understanding of this. Now here we uh, already draw a very important uh, theorem. Okay, it's called heckscher olin theorem. The theorem says the country that is abandoned in the factor exports the goods whose production is intensive in that factor, okay? Now, um, it, it, it sounds like a, a tongue twister, right? But here is the simple way we could, you know, remember this. Every economy exports its abandoned resources. Now, you may say, hey, what we're talking about, the, the economies uh, should export the goods, right? Cloth or, or food. Why we're saying that the uh, export resources? Yes, they are uh, exporting cloth and food. We said here, home export cloth and foreign export food, right? No doubt, that's the fact. That's true. However, what we're saying is, um, when we look at the fundamental drivers or the causes of international trade between these two economies, actually they're not really, you know, uh, or just trading uh, the goods, uh, cloth and food. They're actually trading their abandoned resources. Okay, home is abandoned in labor, so it would like to export its labor. Uh, service and foreign is uh, abandoned in capital so it would like to export its capital service right in other words the fundamental logic here is um, resources okay it's about the trade of resources between the two economies right this is exactly why we when we start this chapter we said here, we're going to discuss what determines comparative advantage, right? So here we find it's actually abundance of resources that determines um, the comparative advantage of each economy in global trade, all right?